this customer does exist, or this consumer does exist, um, what are the trends that they are aspiring to? So you all mentioned, you know, they're all young. Yeah. Well, a lot of them are young. Whether they have money, that's a different discussion. But there's a, there's a, there's a cadre of young, up-and-coming consumer, probably I would say 50% below 24 years of age. Um, what trends are they aspiring to, and how does that affect your strategy of rollout across the continent? We see definitely a, f a significant increase in quality focus and brand consciousness. Okay. Having said that, from the from the youth, you see a trend where they're starting to put more importance around the experience versus owning the brand specifically. <coughs> and, I, and I think brands has got a huge responsibility in today's life to connect with the consumer. But your connection is more around what the consumer values, specifically because what's important to him and to her is what really connect them to the brand and what the brand stands for. Authenticity and being really real is a key connection point for us with our consumers. And, and that's what they value. And that's why also if you look at, you know, we, we do it very simply, if you look at the contents of our products, we disclose all of that and we try and educate our consumers as well because everyone is aware of calorie intake, etc. So we make them aware of how they can reduce the potential calorie intake. Yeah, I think there's, um, there's a couple of things that we are seeing specifically in uh, the food verse, or food verse um, which is young consumers looking at global trends on health, veganism, um, calorie count, counting and these kinds of things, but then expecting it localized. So what that means is serve me my favorite local food that my mom can make, but give me a vegan option because that's We've done, we did a cravings report last year, and getting as local, as close to local as possible, influenced by global trends, is something that um, yeah. consumers are really looking for. So what we've seen from MasterCard's perspective is this shift from airtime to data, and um, the, the kind of, uh, you know, it's government regulation that's driving down the cost of data. We, we've seen smartphones becoming, you know, they're really becoming cheap. The processing power is becoming quite exponential as well. So these young consumers have access to kind of knowledge, right? And um, then it leads on to personalization and instant gratification. You know, they want it now. So they're very eager and willing to consume product. Um, they're looking for, you know, purpose-driven brands, um, as Jacques uh, kind of alluded to. Um, they want to make sure that brands stand for something, that, um, you know, when it comes to sustainability and uh, they are contributing to the environment. And, um, you know, there is inclusive growth in what the brand stands for. So that's kind of what we see around the consumer changing the behavior. And, um, you know, just from a payments perspective, the, the, the phone, the mobile device, is going to become this key touch point for, for commerce. And that's the way we see it. So for me, brands, if, if, the, if you want to engage the African consumer, you need, to, you, you need to ensure that you're mobile first, that you engage them in a mobile first manner, because 96% of web traffic happens on mobile phones. And that is the reality. Um, and, and, and so that's how you should redefine your consumer experience, place the consumer at the center of whatever you do, and build your value story around that. 